hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Backtracking is a method that can be used to solve the value of a pronumeral or an unknown. It involves starting at the end and working backwards step by step until you've solved that pronumeral, you've solved the unknown. This is done by performing the inverse or the opposite of each operator. In maths, things tend to have an opposite which undoes the original operation. So if the original operator was plus, if we had done addition, what undoes addition? That would be subtraction. And likewise for multiplication, the inverse or the opposite, the thing that undoes multiplication is division. Now this doesn't just work for plus minus times and divide. It works for essentially anything. If we had, say, uh, something squared, or well, the inverse, the opposite, how do you undo squared? Well, you take the square root of it. And let's say you had the sine of an angle, but you wanted the angle, you would need to take the inverse sine. This undoes the sine operation. So the inverse is just the opposite. It's something that undoes the operator. Let's take a look at how this is uh, used with backtracking. So we have this example here. What we want to do is solve for a. I don't want to know that 5a plus 3 equals 23. I just want to know what a equals. So what we would do is start at the a and ask ourselves what has actually happened to that a. Well, first it was multiplied by 5 and then someone came along and added another 3. That got us to 23 as the answer. Now we start the backtracking. What we do is we start at the end, so we're starting at the 23, and we're going to work backwards, step by step. So first we'll do this step, and we're going to do the inverse. Well, what's the inverse, the opposite of plus 3? That would be minus 3. So, so far we have 23 minus 3. That would put us at 20. And then we do the inverse of the other step. Now, originally it was times 5. The inverse of times 5 is going to be divided by 5. So we're going to take that 20 that we now have, and we divide it by 5. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. But, oh look, that arrow took us back to a. So what we can say is that a equals 4. We have solved for a using the backtracking method. So let's look at a couple of other examples now. Here we have 3 into 4a plus 5 equals 39. That might be lovely, that's well and good, but I want to know what a is equal to. So we ask ourselves, what has happened to the a? Well, first the a was multiplied by 4, and then someone came along and added 5 more, and then whatever that was, that was multiplied by 3 to give us 39 as the final answer. Grand. Let's work backwards now. Let's start our backtracking from the 39. We will come backwards. The opposite, the inverse of times 3, is going to be divided by 3. 39 divided by 3 will give us 13. Now that arrow is a bit in the way, so let's just put it down here. Okay, so we're at 13. And we keep backtracking. We go step by step. So now we do 13 minus 5, because that's the opposite of the original plus 5. 13 minus 5 is 8. And then there's only one more step to go. We have 8, and then we want the inverse of times 4. Well, that would, of course, be divided by 4. So we have 8 divided by 4 gets us back to a, which means, of course, that a is equal to 2. We have solved for a by backtracking. Let's do one more quick example. Here we go. We have 3a minus 16 all over 5 equals 4. Let's have a look at what actually happened first. The a was multiplied by 3, and then someone came along and stole 16, and then someone else came along and divided everything by 5. That gave us the answer of 4. Grant. Let's start backtracking now. First we're going to do this step, and then this one, and then our final step will get us 
back to what a actually equals. So the inverse of divided by 5 is of course times 5. So let's do that. 4 times 5 is 20. And the inverse of minus 16 is plus 16. So we'll do that. 20 plus 16 is 36. The inverse of times 3 is divided by 3. So now we have 36 divided by 3. Well, that's 12. But that's A. We're, we're back at A, which means that A equals 12. We have solved for A once again. So that's the backtracking method. This kind of flowchart idea can prove quite helpful. So we start at the end and we backtrack. We work backwards by doing the opposite of each operator, step by step, until we get back to what we want to find out. Don't forget to subscribe. And like and comment.